When it comes to conditional logic, one of the key plugins that we have available to us for absolutely zero cost is Dynamic Visibility for Elementor. This is a free tool that comes from the same people that brought you and bring you Dynamic Content for Elementor. Now, the latest version brings with it a couple of new features. However, it is worth bearing in mind that while this is a free plugin, there are some features, although limited, that are restricted to the paid for version that's included with Dynamic Content for Elementor. But that being said, let's take a look at some of the key new features and why, even with a free version, this is an absolute powerhouse of a plugin. So once you've gone ahead and installed the plugin, there's a lot of different ways in which you can use it inside your designs. We can use it to hide widgets, sections, but we can also go ahead and use it to hide entire page content based upon any or all of the criteria that we set up with this visibility conditions. Let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. So using the template that I've got installed, let's scroll down to a section. Let's take this meet the partner section as an example. We highlight or select the section. And if we go to the left hand side, you'll see we have an option for visibility. If we click to enable that, you can see by default, this is switched off. So no visibility options are being controlled. Once we enable this, we'll now get a lot of new options available to us. Now, before we take a look at some of those options, of which there are many, if we take a look on the right-hand side with the navigator open, you can see the team section has this red line around it and also this little red symbol, which you probably can't see too well in dark mode, but it's basically saying there's conditions being applied to this for visibility. So we've got a visual way of seeing that there's conditions being applied to that particular section, widget, whatever. Okay, so coming back over to the left hand side, let's take a quick run through of the beginning section. I'm not going to go through all the options inside you because there are so many. But you can see we've got some basic options that affect everything we do inside the visibility panel. You can see we can enable it globally. We can always hide this element. We can keep the HTML, which basically keeps the HTML inside the page content, even though it's not being visibly displayed. This can have impacts upon DOM and so on. You can choose the display mode, whether when you set a condition, it's either going to show something or hide something. It's up to you how you prefer to work. Both work in a very similar fashion. So you just simply choose which option you want, and you can see we can choose whatever condition will hide or show. We've then got a logical connective. This set and determines how the conditions are combined. In other words, do we want to use and, or, or? So we can start conditions or we can make them exclusive to each other. So you can see we can just choose and, or or on there. This is great when you want to stack multiple conditions. Then we can choose the different triggers. So if you find there are certain things inside you you have no use for, you can disable them inside this triggers panel and that will then remove them from the different panels we have underneath. So for example, this My Fast app, if I disable that, you'll see that now disappears from the section underneath, cleaning things up. So if you find there are various different features inside you you just don't use, just go ahead and disable them. Just give you a nice clean panel to work with. Okay, so let's just use a really simple example. You can see we can come down to users and roles, and this is probably the way a lot of people will use it. We can choose any particular role. So for example, administrators, users, subscribers, anything you want, including custom uh, roles you may include using third-party plugins or whatever tools you want to use. And we can go, go ahead and we can choose a role from there. So let's just say we want to show this to admins, for example. We'll start typing that in. Administrate is an option. So now what we're doing is we're using this option that says display mode to show this. And then we've set the trigger, which is under user roles and set to be administrator. You could also go even further and just choose selected users if you want to. So you may have a specific user or users that you want. You can simply come in here, start typing and select those. So you can get very granular in how you control the visibility using this plugin. You can then choose the option for users can, and this is probably more of an advanced feature, but when you set up user roles in WordPress, user roles have a selection of different things they can and can't do. For example, view posts, edit posts, delete posts, and so on. You can set up what a user can or can't do inside you by using that option. Like I say, probably a more advanced option for most use cases. And if you want to, you can use user fields and you can target specific user fields or meta fields that you may be using, using tools like advanced custom fields and so on. So there's an absolute boatload of options, even with something as simple as the users and roles option. You can even target things like remote IP addresses, referrers, and also max per user. So we can set the maximum times that they can actually view or hide this particular feature. So there's a lot of options inside there. 
Let's simply go ahead and update this now with a really simple set of visibility options. So if someone's an administrator, they'll get the option to see this. If they're not, it'll be hidden. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. So I'm currently logged in as an administrator. So if I scroll down, you'll see the Meet the Partner section is still available to me. But I'm going to go ahead and open up an incognito window and we'll do exactly the same test inside there where I'm not logged in and we'll find the section has been hidden. So here we are. I've got my incognito window open. I'm not logged in at all as an administrator and you can see our entire section has been hidden. It's as simple as that. There's nothing complex about it. However, you can make it a lot more complex should you need to. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove that condition. It's a really simple condition, but let's go ahead and remove it. So we come back into our user roles and we'll just simply delete that from there. You can see we've also got more advanced options, things like archive, dynamic tags, devices and browser, dates and time. So if you've got things that are specific to a, sp a particular date or time, you may be running an offer or you may have opening times you only want to display outside of your opening times or something like that. You know, a million different reasons why. You've got tons of options inside you to use that dates from, dates to, periods and so on. So there's a ton of options, but this is what's already been in there for quite some time. There are two things I want to show you which are new to working with this plugin. The first one is I want to show you how you can show and hide entire pages using the same set of options because at first glance you don't actually see how to do this and that's because you have to approach it in a slightly different way. All these options are geared towards working with sections and widgets inside a page design. However if we come to the cog in the bottom left hand corner and open up our settings you'll see inside there we've also got a visibility option. If we click to open that up and enable visibility all of those exact same options are available inside you, but now we're dealing with a page level set of visibility options. Again, let me just demonstrate this. We'll keep everything as it was and we'll use the same example. So we'll come back into our user role and we'll set our user role and we'll set this to be admin. We'll set administrator. Now this is great if you want to create a sort of front end dashboard that if someone accidentally got access to a link and you hand lock things down, you could set things up so only user roles of admin would be able to see the content on those pages. Just adds an extra level of security. But that's just one use case. There's tons in which way you could use this. So now we set up the administrator, we'll click on update. We'll do the same again. We'll preview our page where I'm logged in as an administrator. And you can see, I can see everything on the page where it's applicable. Let's go ahead and go back into our incognito window. Let's refresh the page now to make sure that we've got the most up-to-date version. So there you go. You can see when we refresh the page, we now can't see anything because we're not logged in and we're not an administrator. So you can see we can do things on a micro level. In other words, we can do widgets, we can do sections, all those kinds of things, or we can do entire pages. Once again, let's go ahead and clear that. So we're going to get rid of the roles. So that's one of the new things I wanted to show you, but there's also another that's really, really useful. However, this does take a little bit of effort to get set up and work in, but the options are free to do it. Let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's come back out to our meet the partner section one more time. Let's select it. Let's make sure we've got nothing associated with this to show or hide it. Everything is looking good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a feature called geotargeting. And what this allows us to do is choose what country and potentially what city or cities will be able to see particular features. So you may be an international company, but you may have specific features that are only available for certain countries, and you may want to hide those four countries that it's not applicable to. Well, we can use the geotargeting option to do this. And you'll see once we open this up, we've got two simple options, the country and the city. So if we want to do the country, we can simply click on the plus and we can choose from any of the options. So for this example, let's just choose United Kingdom. We'll choose that from there. So now we've set the condition up to geotarget this. So it's going to look at the IP address of the user that's accessing the site and therefore set the condition that we want. So for this example, we'll just click on update. Let's preview this. And because I'm based in the UK, you can see everything is being displayed correctly. And the same thing goes if we go ahead and open up our incognito window where I'm not logged in and you see, but I am still based in the UK. You can see if we scroll down, we've got that section available. So let's go ahead and change one simple parameter. Let's come into the dynamic visibility and change this from showing it if I'm based in the UK to hiding it if I'm based in the UK. We'll update this. So let's go ahead and preview this. If we scroll down, you can see now it's hidden to me. And the same thing goes if we come over into our incognito window, refresh this, you see it's still hidden inside there. 
So this allows us to very easily show or hide things based upon any kind of parameters, and we can stack those on top of each other. So for example, we may want to set that up to be based only in the UK and specific times that will be displayed or hidden. We could do that by stacking these different conditions on top of each other and then using the option for the logical connective to be and or, whichever is applicable to you. So you can see this is incredibly powerful, but there's one thing I quickly want to show you on how you have to go about setting things up to be able to use the geotargeting option because it's not necessarily that simple and straightforward. So there are basically three steps to getting the geolocation all set up and configured, and it is totally free, so don't think there's any charge at the time of releasing this video. And I will also put a link to the articles on how to get started using this in the description below so you can follow along with the help. So what you need to do first of all is install the plugin called Geolocation IP Detection by Yellow Tree. This is the plugin that you're looking at. Again, this is linked in the article. So once you've installed that, we've got the plugin we can use to connect at the geolocation address uh, the database. So the next thing you need to do is go over to the documentation I'm going to supply you with and go ahead and sign up for a free link to this MaxMind option. So what you need to do is simply come into this, go through until you find the option to sign up. You can see steps of migration. We've got sign up to your MaxMind account, create your license key, then you've got to download the actual database itself. So once you've downloaded the database, you then need to upload that to your WordPress website. You may find you have to do this via FTP because the file format, the MMDB, is probably going to be blocked for security reasons inside WordPress. So once you've uploaded that, you're going to need to make note of the actual link to that particular file. This is all a bit, a bit confusing to start off with, but once you've got it all set up, it is relatively straightforward. And you need to do it one time. So if we come into the options then for the geolocation plugin, there's three pieces of information you need. Your account ID, you get when you set up your free account with MaxMind. Your license key, which again is created at the same point. And then once you've uploaded the file, you'll see this is what you need to place inside the file path. And make sure you've got the option for MaxMind City or Country Database, and then hit Save. Once you've done that, you can test the connection out, make sure everything is working by using the test IP detection lookup. That will check to make sure everything is connected and working. And provide everything is, then the geolocation options will work inside the Dynamic Visibility plugin. It's a little bit long-winded, and if you get stuck on anything, be sure to reach out to technical support over at Dynamic Visibility, and I'm sure they can help you get up and running. Okay, so that's basically how you use the plugin. That's some of the features you have and some of the key new features that are included in this recent update to version 5.0, which I think for a lot of users will be massive updates to hide pages and to geolocate. But if you want to find out more about this plugin or any of the other plugins from Dynamic Content for Elementor, there's a link to a playlist, either one of the corners and in the description below with tons of great tutorials. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.